So we are going live again, guys. Uh, as they used to say in the good old Doordarshan times, Rukavat ke liye khed hai. I'm sorry, I don't have that board, but uh, it seems that we were having some technical issues, and I'm waiting for Mansi to join in again. Yeah. Thank you. And in the meantime, I would like you to please again uh, drop in a hello at the platform so that we can know who all are there. We can uh, then proceed to have a more uh, engaging and a more uh, interactive session. I am Dr. Satyan Sharma. I am a psychiatrist. I am based in Punjab and uh, I am uh, waiting for my friend Mansi. She is a psychologist, a psychotherapist based out of Delhi and okay now I'm very clear Kanika thank you so much thank you for the feedback good so right and who who else is there I can see Kanika there I can see about 14, 15 people, who, uh, 13 people who have already joined. Hello, Aarti, how are you? So, today's session. Uh, good evening once again, Minu. Good to have you there. Am I clearly audible to you right now, Aarti and Minu? We had some technical issues. Avi is back. Good to see you again. Preeti is there. Good. Hello, Ananya. Can you hear me clearly, guys? All of you. Can you hear my voice clearly? Is the video okay? Hello, Muskan. How are you? Poonam is back. Hello, Poonam. Sorry for the uh for the technical issues the first time around okay thank you Maureen you can hear me clearly okay good so we are just going to wait for Mansi she is there and I am adding Mansi guys Mansi is an absolutely amazing psychotherapist she helps a lot of people in anguish in pain she helps a lot of people find their way and there she is hello mansi hi finally good much hey. better much better i can hear you much better yes good great thank you thank you for your patience everyone who's joined us today yeah and yes let's just go ahead without wasting any more time yes please okay so we have about so, 15 people here, Mansi, and uh, we are thankful to this wonderful uh, initiative by United for Her, which uh, endeavors to, you know, help women primarily right now, and then I think they are looking to expand that space uh, in, with the uh, issues of mental health, with issues of advocacy, and with the issues of legal health, right? So, yes. Mansi. Good to see you here. Okay. Thank you. So, um, I believe we need to introduce ourselves first, if we haven't already done that, because I missed a little bit of the session. Well, I've told them that you are fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Great. So, let's just start talking about what we are here for, about the mental health issues during the lockdown especially. Yeah. So, uh, first of all, there is a little doubt that everybody has about the difference between a psychologist or a psychotherapist and a psychiatrist. Right. So, um, I would just want you to just give okay. us a little I'll, more information. I'll, 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 I would love to uh, answer that question uh, with, with, with an example which most of us can understand much more easily, right? Uh, so, guys, a psychiatrist is a medical doctor who specializes in issues of mental health and mental illnesses. Yeah, he helps treat those. Yeah, 
and uh, 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 Mansi is a psychotherapist. These people uh, deal with these issues, but a psychiatrist and a psychotherapist are very much like an orthopedician and a physiotherapist. Yeah. So, like an orthopedician is a doctor. If you have a broken bone, you will probably go to see the doctor to set the bone first. Yeah. And then probably over time, when you need to start walking again and build those muscles, build that strength, the orthopedician will say, please see a physiotherapist regularly to build up those muscles. Yeah. So in, in, in the simplest of ways to explain it, I would say a psychiatrist is a doctor who deals with the more serious conditions and tries to treat them with medication. Yeah. And a psychotherapist yeah. is a qualified professional in mental illnesses and in therapies. And psychologists also do testing you know, in terms of. Uh, yeah. No. Strong background noise. Yeah, uh, sort of a hiss, like a... I wonder what that it's, is. Is it better? Is it's it better now? It's better now. Much, much better. Much better. So, my... Oops. Right. Sorry. My phone clicked. <laughs> So anyway, so Mansi, I, I, I think I have uh, given a basic idea about that. Yes. And what I think the, the, the most common word which we keep hearing these days in, in our field of mental health is the word for depression, hmm. right? You see right. a lot of people using the word depression, but what I keep uh, uh, realizing is that probably they're not using it for the right entity. Yeah. So could you it is a very loosely exactly used word right now. It is. It is very loosely used. Yeah. But what would be the right time to say that yes, depression? Can you can you tell us a little bit about okay. that? Yeah. So we have a few classifications usually where we have the symptoms of depression clearly. It is uh, something which it has to be an episode which lasts a minimum of two weeks and has to has to include a depressed mood right. when we say a depressed mood the person uh, usually you know most of the day he spends in a lot of poverty of thought right yeah? that's the way i like to put it that's not what the way that yeah. icd likes to put it yeah. and uh, there is also a lot of uh, problem in the way that people like to enjoy you know they're not able to enjoy the daily activities there's right. a lot of loss of energy which is usually seen and uh, then besides all of these things, there is, you know, there's a lot of low self-esteem mm -hmm. and there will be probably some kind of suicidal thoughts. People will feel very unworthy mm -hmm. and there are a lot more things which if a person really, you know, when if, if somebody is going through any of these things or more towards this line, it's best to talk to a mental health professional at that point of time. Right. Yeah, so that right. we are able to clearly diagnose it and we are able to start helping the people around better. Okay. So, so it is, um, it is depression is not just sadness. Qualify a certain yeah. time amount. It's like, which, yeah, which is two weeks, as you said. And there has to be a low mood for most of the time of the day yeah there are almost yes. no time when you actually yes. feel good and there is an inability to yeah. enjoy everything things which yes. you previously used to like doing now it is not fun anymore yeah yeah okay. and then it also impacts a lot of uh, usually you know a lot of clients come to me and just tell me that when i know that i'm getting into a depressive episode the first warning signs that i get is, are that my sleep goes for a toss so there is a problem right. with sleep. Usually the per a person will undersleep or oversleep. It's not only right. that a person will lose sleep over it. Some people also might just sleep too much and there will be changes in appetite. They usually say that there is a loss of body weight or there is an increase in body weight. Right. You know, in, in such episodes that one is of depression um, because of obviously the appetite issues also coming. And there's a lot of self-harm people just at that point of time. I've seen a lot of clients who will probably just 
be glued on to their television there'll be a lot of procrastination about doing things you know they're like they probably see it as procrastination but it's people like us who work in the field of mental health who will be able to relate it more to a depressive symptom right right so, so simply I, put, I agree broadly that's what mm-hmm. i agree with you many times signs and symptoms of depression are given labels of laziness or of avoiding work right Very or of you know not Very doing true. enough whereas the person is actually suffering and not able to do it even when they know that they need to be doing it right so yes. it is it yes. is a condition which is not in the person's hand it is a disease it is something that we don't choose to do and yes blaming a person for having depression would probably be as wrong as blaming somebody for getting a fever you know and asking exactly. them kya aapne aapne machhar ko kyun kaatne diya <laughs> right very so good. i understand that that very well yeah. explained manasi that depression so is also yeah Please and i would uh, now like to just ask you about you know you, there's usually a lot of confusion in people uh, when it comes to depression and anxiety so what is it really that anxiety does to a person how is it that clinically you would consider something to be anxiety which needs attention right right so anxiety by itself is just a symptom right it is uh, an experience the experience of anxiety is hardwired in the human brain now you remember the time when we used to be hunters and gatherers anxiety was a very important tool if immediately a tiger jumps in front of you you will immediately your body will start producing those hormones and that response which will help you to fight flight or in very extreme cases probably freeze yeah now in the modern world in the modern world that flight or fight response coming up all of a sudden without any provocation so anxiety yeah. is a feeling of a loss of control palpitation which means that you can feel your heart beat you can feel yourself sweating you can feel that there is a tiger in front of you without the tiger being there yeah so it's the body's emergency response to a situation which does not uh, really happen but that does not mean that you don't have a problem yeah so only the person who has anxiety probably can explain what they go through yeah a feeling of doom something wrong is going to happen something which i cannot escape i don't know what i am going to do difficulty in breathing feeling heaviness on the chest feeling that you cannot breathe yeah so these are the common symptoms of anxiety and uh, uh again if it keeps happening again and again uh, in very severe forms there can be something called as a panic attack you know which lasts probably only 15 to 20 minutes but that particular attack is so disabling it's almost like having as one of my teachers used to say like having a heart attack of the brain yeah and that's a good yes. question kanika is anger anxiety uh, no kanika anger is not anxiety although in in punjabi we use the word pretty interchangeably uh, the word ghabrahat in punjabi is many a times a synonym for 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 anxiety also and anger also yeah but anger is not anxiety anger is a different emotion and uh, anxiety is a very different emotion yeah okay and and while you were talking about depression manasi i wanted yes. to ask you that uh, uh, do different sexes express or experience dip- uh, depression differently like is it different Absolutely. for women yeah Absolutely. and also about. i would like to say that uh, people in different age groups also express it very differently while right. you know a woman who is in her middle age or probably you know who's who's a grown up woman per se mm-hmm. would be expressing it somewhere in the body it would be like body pains hila nahi ja raha utha nahi ja raha kuch karne ko man nahi kar raha right. yeah? yeah that's where it typically you know that if there's somebody like we we thought that we will address it like that that if there's somebody at home or somebody around you who is depressed how would you probably figure out whether the person is feeling de- is right. in a state of depression 
or is it just sadness which is interchangeably used mm. so usually in women uh, they also tend to withdraw quite a bit they will just start withdrawing from the show, social outings as well kitty yeah. parties jaate the ab kitty parties jaane ka man nahi kar raha mm. there are people who will probably keep calling you up you would not even want to pick up the phone at that point of time and keep thinking ki chalo theek hai wapas phone kar lenge but wapas phone nahi kiya and um, there will be you know there'll be a lot of procrastination usually which is seen in women that mm. uh, even the daily things that the husband is just about to get back from work and she will get up at that point of time and just start cooking right right okay so all of these things are basically something when if it's happening to somebody in your family just watch out a little try and talk to that person a little and figure out what it is so that help can be sort of brought into that person now uh, for children um, i've worked with a lot of schools as well so usually in school children how it used to persistently we used to see that the grades of the child used to start coming down right. and if a child was doing quite all right in school dheere dheere karke grades kam aate gaye the child would either put on some weight lose some weight the mothers would come up and say ki ye to kuch khata hi nahi hai aajkal sara din kamre mein ghusa rehta hai sara din ek muh bana ke baitha rehta hai isse kuch poocho now irritability is what i was coming to so irritability can happen across all sexes and age groups as well yeah and depression does not come in with anything in particular it right. can it does not use it does not have to attribute to a major life event right it can just you know not that ki family mein kisi ki death ho gayi to depression ho gaya divorce ho gaya to depression ho gaya do those are things which actually they can you know, they do bring around depression but it's not important that nahi hua kuch to us bande ko depression nahi ho sakta yeah, yeah. and it's so very it's a little thing it's it's very interesting when you mention that and i must sorry i'm jumping in but it sure. triggered something in my mind that uh, people many times come and say not sab isko kis cheez ka depression hai iske paas gaadi hai iske paas ghar bhi hai iske paas sab kuch to hai so what is the cause of his depression so as i as i to use the machhar example earlier right we cannot yeah. blame somebody for being ill and then say ki isko not sab ka machhar kaat liya hoga iske to ghar mein air conditioner laga hua hai राइट इट काम होता है तो देविल से के काम करना पड़ता है पहले मैं शौक से right. करती थी अब मजबूरी में करना पड़ता okay. है राइट सो एंड देन देयर दे दे मे नॉट हैव द साइकोलॉजिकल माइंडेडनेस एज अ टर्म व्हिच वी यूज टू टू से सैडनेस दे मे दे मे एक्सप्रेसेस इट एक्सप्रेस इट एज फिजिकल पेन यू नो एज एक्स एंड पेन कमजोरी रहती है उठा नहीं जाता है right they may not use the word uh, yeah. man nahi karta you know because of our cultural beliefs so kara nahi jata neend nahi aati neend puri yeah. nahi hoti aisa lagta hai ki jitna marzi solo neend puri nahi hoti right. so that's something which i hear very often when it comes Absolutely. to it. so sleep and appetite both these cycles are disturbed and they can be disturbed in either way either there can be yes. increase of hunger or a very decrease of hunger there Politics. can be increase of sleep or a lack of sleep absolutely and stuti is also asking mansi uh, does depression change the attitude of thinking that's that's i think so a it is good question yeah <laughs> okay so attitude of thinking uh, yes other people might just feel it to be a lot of mood swings yeah. and when a person is in that depressive state my as i stated before there's a lot of poverty of thought yeah, yeah. so anything that is told to a person the attitude might just sound as a very negative attitude of that person yeah. at that time yeah. it's not that ki person change ho jata hai it is only a very temporary thing that they will because of that poverty of thought start expressing things differently start yeah. reacting to things differently and just putting it across as if 
the whole world has changed for them absolutely absolutely so i think it's it's uh, many a times uh, when patients come to me in 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 a state of depression suffering from depression it is very common for me to give them advice that don't take any major life decisions right now yes. don't quit that job don't you know change that uh, major life circumstance right now because you are suffering from depression yeah depression will color your thinking depression will make you uh, less confident about yourself it will affect your self image it will affect the way you perceive the world and yourself so let us first take care of depression don't take any major right. life decisions yet because exactly. your thinking is not normal right now so yeah. very yeah. good question um wahan pe uh, by stuti on how to uh, on how how depression changes your attitude and your way of thinking yeah so uh, arti is asking mansi and this may be an interesting question as to how can we help someone who is in denial of depression for example yeah okay yeah so denial is just actually more common than depression is in totality these days number of people who are living in denial are much more than the ones who are being treated now um when it when the person it's very good for a family member to basically identify a person who is very close to that person who is in denial it's important for that person first to identify that this could be a problem area right, right. once that problem area is identified by somebody else it's very important to rope in a mental health professional at that point of time mm-hmm. to be able to help you because this is very case specific what are these asking right now is very case yeah. specific mm-hmm. uh it's not a one size fits all kind of a therapy which works but yes a lot of support is required from mm-hmm. the people who are around because mostly depression will bring about loneliness Yes. It will bring about a lot of not wanting to talk about the whole issue. Right. So when that happens, there has to be somebody, and people have to work as a team. So even when a person, after being, you know, after getting out of that denial, when a person comes to us, we ideally like to treat it like that: that the whole team, or which consists of the family members, the psychotherapist, and the psychiatrist, all of us work together. All of us try and understand. if we have noted something different about that person who is you know right now suffering from depression and how is it that as a team work it can be treated so yeah when there is anybody who is in so much of denial of the thing just educate inspire first mm-hmm. of all inspiration giving an inspiration uh, in those aspects really works well till the time that you're able to actually physically push that person to come in and taking therapy Right. and even um it used to be a more of a challenge earlier in earlier days when technology wasn't that great because you used to used to actually have to push a person physically to go yeah. and see a therapist right but now with online platforms platforms like united for her and other right. platforms that therapists are usually using it is just about encouraging that person to just connect a call and speak to somebody and just try and figure out ki chalo theek hai sab kuch theek hai but ek bar baat karke to dekh lo ho sakta hai kuch aur tarika nikal jaye the person who is neutral who is not your family member might just be able to help you in a little bit better manner because there are no emotions attached of the psychologist or the psychotherapist with that client right right so i think you you answered it very well uh, to not try to take on denial head on yourself but enlist the help of a professional and your job primarily is to take the person to the professional and try to explore you know create a non threatening space it's very common in our culture for people to say main psychiatrist ko kyun dekhu main pagal hu kya why should i see a psychotherapist why should i see a psychologist i am not mad right so i think it is important to educate yourself first about what you think are the symptoms right and then be able to educate the person just enough to be able to sit and share it in a safe space with a professional even you know uh, the the heavy lifting is left to the professional to do yeah ghar walon ki baat and safe and also 
<laughs> sorry to jump in no, but a safe no. and a non judgmental place is what we do provide in when therapy is concerned because there'll be a lot of things where the client might not be able to talk to the you know usually our mothers and usually our family members are very good counselors yeah um uh, but the only one thing that differentiates them from us professionals is that when you go to a professional the professional will not have any emotions attached the professional yeah. will not judge you okay so it's just like you know it used to happen earlier that get into a confession box and just confess it to yeah. confess it to the priest and you know that's just open your heart and mind out vent a little because usually uh, venting is also seen to be a very effective way of dealing with it it's a very mm-hmm. effective way of dealing with mental hygiene also yes and i'm i'm glad you mentioned that word mental hygiene you know because i think now with the corona virus being out there and everybody talking about physical hygiene hand hygiene right i think it's the right time to also start talking about mental hygiene right so uh, ananya has asked a question uh, that how, how uh, i mean her question is i think in two parts first is what are some signs which indicate that we need to take care of our mental health i'll quickly answer that ananya uh, there are two main areas of your life which is your work and your relationships yeah if you feel that you are having challenges in performing either of in either of these areas to your satisfaction then it is mostly and and you don't have a physical illness which is keeping you from uh, from performing well then it is most likely uh, that you probably need professional help to take care of your mental health you know and it's it's uh, as as one of my friends used to say that if you have this question in your head that should i see a mental health expert do i need a professional probably it's the right time to actually go and check it out yeah now mental health is 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 a specialized field in itself and there are lots of people who can help you yeah so talking about again mental hygiene so mansi i have a list of four things which uh, i talk about when we are talking about mental hygiene first one is exercise this is one regular activity which has taken the biggest hit i believe during the lockdown we are not able to physically move our bodies you know just exercising at the right time at a regular time can help protect against mental health issues also sorry and then second one would be uh, keep a watch on your sleep are you able to sleep well are you sleeping regularly yeah and then thirdly would be diet are you able to eat well eating regularly yeah and then fourthly is of course having something to keep your mind positively occupied for most of the time of the day which is usually work yeah so uh, yes. these four things if you are able to take care of uh, you are maintaining good mental hygiene and of course staying away from media staying away from most of the negativity would be another long big step in in maintaining your sanity during these pandemic times yeah social media and regular media both of them can be equally damaging yeah uh, but see uh, i think so it's best yeah. to be informed yeah. but then let that information not consume you all the time you know it it started turning out to be like that that people only after listening to this news which is there kitne cases ho gaye corona ke kitne cases ho gaye they just try they just start getting into that little zone ki hame ho jaye to then what are we going to do how are we going to cope up with it etc and it's just that they are attracting all of it to them so yeah. now uh, news it's very important to be informed but only to be informed right okay. it doesn't have to mean that you're glued to the news all the time figuring out ki corona mein hota kya hai ye hota hai wo kya hai we are taking our measures everybody is taking precautions i have never before seen an auto wala wearing a mask and driving an auto yeah. but today in these days and times we are seeing that we're doing the best we can to protect ourselves yeah. but then when we are overthinking about that particular thing is where we need to just sort of put a Draw little full stop there yes. and come back to what we 
actually are supposed to do without giving it too much of energy absolutely you are absolutely correct on that so there is a question from kanika uh, manasi uh, she is asking uh, that people start going to pandits and faith healers when they find someone with, in this kind of a condition and uh, what do you think is that the right thing to do See, it is all about belief systems i wouldn't say that it is right or it is wrong what works for you is always right for you there's mm-hmm. no two ways around that mm-hmm. but yes i tend to always believe that what you can do yourself is more than changing your own destiny yeah mm-hmm. you can write your own destiny agar khud hi kuch nahi karoge for your own destiny how is a pandit going to help you he's only going to put some fear in your mind ki ye tumhara time kharab aa raha hai and in that time you will stop making those efforts you would stop thinking positive about that time right so it is again each to their own about their belief systems sometimes belief systems work phenomenally well right right but sometimes they do not right so, yeah so, so i believe that that when a person is in those uh, uh, difficult times he is also highly suggestible so uh, authority yes. figure like a pandit ji or somebody saying that uh, time acha aa raha hai versus time bura aa raha hai will implant that yeah. idea in your head and probably you will start working towards it so if you have a yes. good pandit ji who says good things please do go to him <laughs> you know at times it is important to hear good things to feel good about yourself uh, but uh, in case you are able to identify your symptoms as being depressive and anxiety related probably it's a better idea to see a professional as a psychiatrist or a, or a doctor yeah okay yes. so uh, another uh, good question i think this might be we are, we are going towards the about uh, 35 minute mark and uh, let me ask our viewers and I'll, I'll, i'll take this one question from avi uh, what are some common stressors which affect mental health during the covid 19 crisis um, so manji you have answered the one part of it that the news which keep coming in they are one important factor in terms of uh, increasing the anxiety related to covid 19 uh, i think there is another important stressor uh, because of the lockdown people being forced to stay together you know and not all family environments may be good to be in right there are people who live in toxic relationships or in uh, you know uh, in difficult relationship uh, environments in, in in households and with people not going out to work and being forced to live together that by itself can create uh, circumstances which are not so good uh, we already do know that instances of domestic violence have gone up during the covid uh, crisis right Uh, instances of problem drinking have increased during the covid crisis yeah even uh, apparently uh, i mean officially the uh, alcohol supply lines were cut off but still people were able to procure it or whatever stock they had they were binging on it so these issues can happen they have happened uh, and uh, next question for you uh, i would i would just like to ask our audience shall we we are towards the fact end of our session right now so i would uh, request them to just put in the questions quickly we probably have another 5 or 8 minutes of uh, session left yeah uh, manasi for you the question is from anjali uh, children are also facing and uh, it's especially difficult for children how can we handle kids during during these times so so it is very important for us to just keep them absorbed mentally physical activity i do agree is like a little low right now for them yeah. um but staying at home whatever physical activity can be given to them because you know if their physical energy is too much um it is fact i mean their physical energy is too much they will not be able to go out they will not be able to burn it out so we have to give them which consumes them yeah right. which consumes their uh, they could probably just get into some creative stuff which you can do for them talk to them that is the most important thing make your lockdown diaries 
very beautiful with a lot of special memories there's hardly any time even on a sunday that the whole family gets together right so if the whole family is able to utilize that time as a bonding time at the end of the lockdown you will have a very beautiful scrapbook of your own memories of the lockdown which are going to be very effective on the mind of the children and of the elders also right so yeah just make it entertaining for them just make it nice and very grippy for them whatever just sing and dance with them do things as you would have done when you were a child चांस to just come to that level where you are disconnecting from the world you are disconnecting from every thought that is probably coming to you and just the same space as your child with quality time the children you these days are very used to seeing you on the phone yeah, yeah. all the children will be saying that mama papa phone chhod do please or mm. else we also want a phone mm. because we yeah. are so absorbed in it right so the moment that quality time is spent things will be very well taken care of for the children right right that's that's very well said and uh, yeah i i love the idea of having a covid uh, scrapbook of sorts you know which gives you a common project to work on and keep yourself engaged good uh, yeah. muskan has a question on uh, you said that uh, stresses have increased so have the number of patients seeking help during this time also increased or is it the same as before yeah uh, i would uh, say that definitely muskan unfortunately there has been a rise in 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 uh, mental illnesses and issues related to mental illness and uh, thankfully at the same time there has been an increase in people seeking help for for their issues uh, reaching the professionals i have definitely seen at least 30 to 40% uh, uh, increase in in inquiries about issues in uh also patients who were previously stabilized on treatment having relapsed having had issues because of increased stress so yes these are difficult times again uh, i i keep seeing all those uh, uh you know uh, social media posts about get your best board right now during the lockdown you know or do this certification and come uh you know use the time to you know climb up on to the next level during this and i'm i'm like i i am a little skeptical i think well let's be realistic we're going through a pandemic our job description probably is survive this yeah <laughs> go through this get out of this adapt yeah, true. yeah. Well it's, it's not it's not the right time to be competitive it's probably the best time to be cooperative yeah so that's that what we need to be doing more of and uh, right. ananya ananya is asking how important is mental well being and uh, do you think that people that uh, people give it enough importance mansi that's a good question unfortunately people are not giving it too much importance uh what people would rather do is probably you know just listen listen to something which can be done at a subconscious level they like to work around it like that but i have not seen too many people taking care of it practically yeah it it's a very different thing when we just you know want to address it at some particular level uh we might just switch on youtube listen to a lot of lectures but when we actually come down to doing it are we really able to do it people always or when i'm on calls or something people always tell me that we are not able to meditate you know people keep saying that meditation mm-hmm. karo meditation karo yeah. but has anybody ever thought that modern day practicality uh are you able if you're not able to really meditate have you ever just started have you just actually gone under the shower just felt your body getting totally relieved 
yes. in that shower in that moment in that exact one minute of your being there mm. you know usually when we meditate we have this uh, technique called progressive relaxation so yeah. in progressive relaxation we start from the head going down to the forehead then to the nose and lips and then you know to the whole body as such and we just okay. feel each part of the body getting relaxed so that progressive relaxation if you are not able to do it otherwise just do it in the shower just give yourself a little time don't think of so many things together you know when we are making a khichri in our own mind that is the time when we are actually encouraging those thoughts which are not really required for us well right. we are just encouraging those things which are unimportant which we are not able we are probably not going to be practically able to deal with it people rarely imagine worst case scenarios they rarely have a plan b c and d also at hand so if mm-hmm. a plan a fails their life comes crashing down they totally collapse mentally right right so, so when yeah we happen, are not yeah. doing we are not we are not paying it enough attention even even when we use the words you know we are not living those words many a times and and uh, meditation as you said yes i also i mean i am a little restless as as a personality i find it extremely difficult to meditate yeah but i think uh, uh, more to do with the definition of meditation which is being present in the here and now and i think you are absolutely correct when you say that probably the shower is the best place where you can in the here and now feeling those sensations of probably just water washing off you is probably something which we can do as a relaxation technique um, and 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 i agree with that that's a very good very very well put uh, idea so there's uh, there are a few questions again a uh, we is asking uh, again the same thing about how to distinguish depression or a low phase yeah so so as mansi has already told you uh in uh, depression is more to do with the duration it has to be about two weeks yeah it has to be feeling low most of the days and most of the time during those couple of weeks yeah so if if that kind of a time duration is uh, you have been observing regularly in a loved one uh, and uh, the mood is also that low they are not communicative they are not able to enjoy things that probably is the right time where you should suspect depression and to confirm your uh, suspicion go meet a professional talk to one online uh, book a session with them and then confirm yeah it's always better to err on the side of caution it's better to suspect something and then confirm it and probably not have it than to not confirm it have it and let the person suffer through it yeah so i i think we had we had an excellent session mansi uh, we had wonderful participation from all the audience we had a great uh, number of people asking us questions so regularly and uh, thank you for being here and thanks again for uh, united for her for having this platform where where you can where we could uh, share our uh, uh, knowledge of uh, mental health mansi would you like to say some closing words Thank you so much, everybody, for joining in, and thank you, United, for her. Thank you so yeah. much. So we'll sign off now, guys. Take care. All the best. Thank you, Mansi, again for being here, for sharing your thoughts you. and experiences on this. Okay, guys. See you thank later you. then. Bye bye. Take care. Take care.